Hey hockey player, Coach Garner here from HockeyTraining.com and in this video I want to talk to you about how to prep for tryouts and camps. I want to go through some of the tips, tricks, and even mistakes that some athletes make because knowledge is power. The more knowledge you have, the more you can apply. And the more you can apply, the better you are going to perform out in the ice. So I've got five main things that I want to talk to you about because tryouts and camps, they're right now. So we got to start getting all our ducks in a row and doing everything that we need to do to prepare appropriately so that we are our best self out in the ice. First and foremost, we have what's known as a taper and peaking phase. Now, if you've been doing your off-season training program design, your off-season program should have included some form of tapering and peaking phase. How it essentially works is it operates on something known as the fitness fatigue model. You have a fitness fatigue model that really operates in two straight lines. You need to train really hard to increase your hockey specific fitness, but in training very hard, you also increase how much fatigue you're accumulating over time. This is why we do things like deloads to bring fatigue down. But during a tapering and peaking phase, you've been training really hard to increase your hockey specific fitness. And because of that, your fatigue has gone up. But how a tapering and peaking phase is designed is to do enough training volume at an appropriate intensity to maintain your fitness levels, but drop your fatigue. Hence, peaking hockey performance. That's how a taper and peaking phase operates because when you taper appropriately, you allow the muscle to get refilled with glycogen. You allow your hormone system to restabilize because when you are very fatigued, things like cortisol, a stress hormone can get a little too high, testosterone can start to drop. There's a lot of endocrinology that occurs in an athlete that is overtraining. Um, your nagging injuries start going away. The list goes on and on and on. When you start tapering down the that volume and intensity, but you keep just enough to maintain your current physical qualities, that is a perfect taper and peak. And basically, all you need to do is taper and peak starting two weeks out and keep it simple. For the first week, all you're going to do is reduce training volume by 50%. So your training volume, that just represents how many sets and reps you do per week in the gym. So if I was going to reduce my training volume by 50%, then and I had to do bench press six sets of 10 reps, well then a 50% reduction in volume would be three sets of 10 reps. So all I want you to do is cut your sets in half for two weeks prior to a tryout or camp that's incredibly important to you. But do not reduce the intensity. You do not want to reduce the intensity. Intensity in sports science terms represents the resistance being applied during the exercise, meaning how much weight are you lifting? So although in a tapering and peaking phase, we're going to reduce training volume by 50%, we are not going to reduce the intensity during this time frame. So week one, re reduction in training volume by 50%. And then in week two, you can go up to a reduction in training volume all the way up to 75%. So if you were doing four sets of a certain exercise that week in the gym, you would just do one set. You're going to cut that thing right down 75%. This is going to allow your body to get rid of that fatigue, but do just enough in order to maintain your current physical qualities to make sure you peak when it's time for tryouts and camps. I can't emphasize the importance of a tapering and peaking phase enough. It's something I really like to do with the hockey athletes who run the off-season domination program here at hockeytraining.com. I build, uh, it's built right in tapering and peaking phase. And I also build in a tapering and peaking phase in the in-season program as well prior to playoffs. It just makes sense. We want to peak and be our absolute best for tryouts, camps, playoffs. All right. So that is incredibly important. But if you are somebody who falls under the category where you haven't followed an exact hockey training program design, well, first off, I would say you, you missed the boat this offseason if you didn't get on a true program. Your program needs to be coordinated and sequenced and periodized in a way to truly get a hockey specific result. There's a, you know, a workout. It's a lot more than just a collection of sets and reps. 
but a program is a lot more than just a collection of workouts. And an off season is a lot more than just a collection of programs. This all needs to be intertwined with one another. But if you're somebody who's just been kind of training but not on an exact hockey training program, just take time off before tryouts. Three days off. You take three full days off completely. No, no intense activity, no speed, no conditioning, no strength, no hypertrophy, nothing. Three days prior to tryouts and camps, allow your body to fully recover. You can do hockey mobility and hockey yoga during this time frame, but no more intense activity because you're not gonna get faster three days before camp. You're not gonna get more conditioned or more fit or drop more body fat three days before camp. Biology responds to averages over time. So when we drop everything out three days before camp, it's a great way to accelerate the reduction of fatigue and accelerate the um, peaking of your hockey performance. So if you haven't been on a plan and you don't, you're not confident in setting up a tapering and peaking phase, then just simply take three complete days off when it comes to uh, peaking for your tryouts and camps. Number three refers to carbohydrate loading. Carbs are very important for hockey performance. Hockey is a glycolytic sport, meaning you are going to be utilizing carbohydrates as your preferred fuel source for both the muscular system and the nervous system for your workouts and also your on ice activities. So carbohydrates, hockey players have intuitively known, I should have carbs before a game, I should have carbs the night before a game, should I be carb loading? Well, when it comes to tryouts and camps, lots of times it is a good idea to incorporate a legitimate carbohydrate load. Why? Because you might be on the ice two or three times in one day. And you might be on the ice, say, two times a day for three days in a row or more. So you're going to be utilizing a lot of your own fuel. And lots of times, conditioning, your reduction in conditioning out in the ice doesn't necessarily have to do with your muscular conditioning levels, but instead, a lack of fuel supply. You will get tired if you don't feed that supply and demand chain. Your pre, intra, and post on ice nutrition is wildly important. But carb loading, this big mistake that some hockey athletes make is they'll have a gigantic pasta the night before their camp. So they want to carb load the night before and then they're going to get on the ice first thing in the morning. As the research continues to come out and as you learn a lot more about digestive biochemistry, you learn something known as the ileal break. So our gastrointestinal system contains a lot of different organs, but our small intestines are made up of the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Now, why does that matter? Because if we have a very, very large meal, well, that'll take a long time to digest. And there's something known as the ileal break to where if you are still working on digesting a meal, well, and it is still working its way through the intestines, then food in the stomach will have to wait its turn. The ileum, which is the final, it's the third and last piece of the small intestine before uh, things get converted into the large intestine, that will say, hold on, we are still moving food remnants through the intestinal tract, so I don't want any more food coming from the stomach at this point in time. This is important to care about because until you process all of that food, you're gonna have food sitting in your stomach. So you're gonna have food sitting all the way up here. And what's going to happen when you try and get in the ice the next morning? Well, you're going to wake up. You're probably going to try and eat breakfast because you have to follow Coach Garner's pre-game nutrition uh, recommendations. But you still have food in your stomach. So that food is going to enter the stomach and it will also sit in there. And how does food feel like sitting in your stomach before you go on the ice? You're gonna be bloated, you're gonna be gassy, you're gonna have that the reduced hydration absorption. It's when you're drinking a lot of water and you kind of move around and you can hear sometimes and definitely feel the water just sloshing around in your gut. That's the ileal break saying, hold up everybody, we need to process this food before we do anything else. So you're gonna carry all that food in your gut with you on the ice and that is absolutely gonna result in suboptimal performance. 
How do we get around this? Well, if you're gonna have a carb loading meal the day before tryouts or camps or even tournaments, make it lunch. That's when you wanna have your carb loading meal. Don't have it at dinner time, don't have it right before bed. Have your big carb loading meal with lunch because that is absolutely going to allow enough time for the food to get processed through the stomach, through the all three sections of the small intestine, then enter the large intestine. You're gonna have more than enough time to properly carb load the body because you aren't what you eat. You only are what you eat and actually absorb prior to ice time. You need to care about that, all right? So that's a huge carb loading mistake hockey athletes make, but it's a simple fix. Have your carb load meal with lunch the day before. Number four is hydration. Now the reason I wanted to talk about hydration with you falls very much in line with my reasoning for why I wanted to talk about carbohydrate loading with you. Primarily because you're gonna be expending a ton of physical activity expenditure. You're gonna be on the ice. Um, if it's not two times a day or three times a day, then it's gonna be one long session each and every single day and you feel the pressure. You, there could be scouts there. You're competing against your teammates. The coaches are looking at you. You wanna make the team. There's a lot of pressure and a lot of physical output and mental and emotional output during this time frame. Hydration impacts all of that. And since you're so active multiple times per day and you don't account to you, you don't hold yourself accountable to rehydrate, then your performance is absolutely going to suffer. And the reason why I wrote hydration here and not water is because hydration is more than just water. People got to stop thinking, oh, I got to have water to rehydrate. No, water hydration is water plus electrolytes. Water is what's actually hydrating the body, but it's the electrolyte balance that determines the intra and extracellular concentrations of that water. So essentially water is coming in the body, but it's electrolytes that's actually gonna get it to your working muscle tissue during exercise or while you're out in the ice. We need to stay hydrated the entire time because when you look at the body of literature in this area, only a 4% reduction in total body water causes a reduced muscular strength. So your shot power is reduced and you're not as strong on the puck. There's also seen to be increased in cardiac stress. So your heart will actually beat faster than it otherwise would have. And we need to care about that because heart rate is directly associated with exercise induced fatigue. Your muscles are also gonna have less muscular endurance but get this, at a 4% reduction in total body water loss, you are gonna have reduced coordination and mental capacity. So as a quick recap, you're gonna be weaker, less conditioned, less coordinated, you're gonna have less mental capacity to remember the plays and read the ice and track the puck and do everything that you're supposed to be doing out there, and you're gonna have increased stress on the heart. We have to be hydrated because you could have had a perfect off season and you could be the most genetically gifted hockey player that's ever walked the planet. But if you're dehydrated, your performance will suffer. It's a rate limiting factor. It does not care about who you are or what you did to prepare for this event. You need to be hydrated period. So what I really like to recommend is hockey athletes have half an ounce of half an ounce of water per pound of body weight per day. So if you have, if you are a 200 pound individual, the minimum you would want is 100 ounces of water per day, and that doesn't include your on ice requirements. So that's what you should be consuming off ice. And then you continue to have your intra game, intra practice, intra workout, water and electrolytes during that time frame as well. If you want information on that, go to hockeytraining.com slash nutrition. I wrote an awesome game day nutrition guideline that you can follow that has all the formulas so you can customize it to your unique needs during tryouts and camps right now. So hydration, I'm sure you can see, is something I could easily do a whole video on all by itself. I can't emphasize its importance enough. And last but not least, we've got number five here. So during your tapering and peaking phase, we need, really need to reduce the output in things like speed, conditioning, and weightlifting. But you can do mobility work the whole way through. And in fact, I recommend it. It'll help you feel a lot more fluid out in the ice. We need mobility for our edge work. We need mobility to properly do mohawk turns. We need mobility just to feel fluid and athletic out in the ice. So 
I like to have hockey athletes perform mobility circuits every single morning leading up to tryouts and camps. I think it's something that you can really do. And it's also something you can do the morning of a tryout or a camp. It's not gonna tap into your fatigue reserves and it's gonna be something that'll improve your performance in a hockey specific way, but not do it at the cost of fatigue. And that is crucial during this time. And then you're gonna wanna do a hockey specific warm up. Okay, warm ups are generally broken into two categories. You have general warm ups that just increase core temperature, and then you have specific warm ups that get you ready for hockey. General warm ups, they're gonna increase core temperature. What does an increase in core temperature do? Helps lubricate the joints, it helps increase muscle metabolism rates, it helps increase oxygenation of the body and blood flow to working muscle tissue. It does a lot of things. It increases range of motion. We need to get warm prior to activity, but then we also need to do specific movements as well to make sure we're not just getting ready for physical activity, but we're getting ready for hockey. So you need to have a hockey specific warm up, and there are plenty of hockey specific warm ups available at hockeytraining.com and also on our YouTube channel as well to make sure you're doing the right things to be the best hockey player you can possibly be. It's not enough to just go jog for five minutes and call that a warm up. That's not a warm up. That is the most general warm up I've ever heard of, and it's definitely not a hockey specific warm up. All right. I hope I was able to point some important things out for you here today. You should do a tapering and peaking phase, but if you don't, take three days off before your tryouts and camps. Make sure your carb loading meal is lunch the day before and not dinner or before bed the day before. You need to be consuming lots of fluids, but also plenty of electrolytes as well because that really matters. That's 50% of the equation when it comes to true hydration. And then mobility work will help your, your fluidity and athleticism out in the ice. And it's something that you are permitted to do every single day leading up to camp. And you need a hockey specific warm up before you get on the ice. I hope you were able to pull something from this video and learn something new because like I said, knowledge is power and I want you to be the best possible hockey player that you can be. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button and also subscribe to our hockey training channel. And if you are going through hockey tryouts and camps right now and moving into the end season, then click on the link in the comment section below because I've got an in season program that's gonna help you dominate this year.